Hello everyone, answer me this. Are you tired of having your bases look like crap? Do you regret putting your fridge 500 meters from your kitchen? Why aren't your colonists eating in your beautifully decorated dining room? Do you hate having to rebuild your entire base after five in-game years, wasting valuable resources? Well, you're in luck. Loreplay is here with a basic tutorial on how to plan your bases with efficiency and looks in mind. I am making this tutorial because it is something that I do before every one of my RimWorld playthroughs, and it's something I ended up learning on my own. I wanted to share my technique for beginners to RimWorld, and also for veterans. Hopefully this can help you come up with new ideas of your own. So make sure to comment below, how do you plan your bases? What are the differences between my bases and yours? I love looking at other people's colonies for new ideas. Just a quick note that this guide is going to act as a sort of generic base for you to grow your colonies based off of your own playstyle and to give you ideas if you ever feel stuck. This guide is also not for hardcore, merciless, ice or desert biomes, naked brutality, those kinds of runs where you really need to build very carefully. Those bases are another beast entirely. I'm assuming you're the type of player who is a little more casual, you're having a good time, you're relaxed, you're confident, you'll get pretty far into the game and you don't want to regret the decisions you made while making your base and having to redo everything later. So if that sounds like you, let's get started. For this tutorial, I'm just going to go with a very basic start. Crash landed is fine. We're going to go with Cassandra Classic. Don't care. I'll click Savage, reload anytime. Doesn't matter. Just a tutorial. Cove is fine for our world. Let's go ahead and generate. Okay, and here is our world. Now, if you are a beginner to RimWorld, I do recommend starting on a temperate forest biome with large hills. Now, large hills are really easy to build around. They provide natural choke points for your defenses, and the temperate forest gives you all four seasons, lots of wood to build with, and it's overall just like a nice experience. So let's go ahead and select a random site until I get a temperate forest with large hills. Okay, temperate forest, large hills, we got two types of stone. This looks good, where are we exactly? We're kind of close to some neighbors, but you know what, it doesn't matter because we're not actually going to be playing this game. I'm not even gonna look through our colonists here, it's just for the tutorial, so let's go ahead and start. Okay, let's see what we have to work with. Well, that's not bad, I like it. If you are new to RimWorld and you don't like your starting zone here, you can always use the map reroll mod, which I have in the corner here. You can click reroll map and then find something that you prefer more than what you landed on. But for this tutorial, we're just going to keep this map as it is. I always plan my bases before I even start playing. I think of it kind of like The Sims where you make your family and then build them their house. <laughs> I obviously don't have the resources to build their house immediately but we can use the planning tool to figure out where we will eventually want things to go now I do recommend the mod more planning tools so you get a lot more control over how you plan your base you can cut your plans copy them paste them and even sort them into different colors which I love so this is what I'm going to be using for this tutorial I also follow the same steps when planning my bases. I always start with defenses, then go to the farm, the freezer, the kitchen, the dining room, the bedrooms, and then I fill in the rest with recreation, hospital, crafting rooms, prison, in any order after that. So the first thing we want to do is look for some natural choke points where we want to put our defenses. There's quite a few choke points here, so this area here, this area here. We don't want to settle this close to the ancient danger, that would be a bad idea. But this area is pretty good for, for defense. In fact, I would actually move the choke point down here. So you could potentially set up a colony here. Now what I'm looking at actually is this whole spot up here. It has a lot more land for us to use versus this is very, very small. But it's really up to you. If you would like to settle right in the middle of the map, unfortunately there's this big mountain in the way, but this place works. It's a little small, but I like it. And then there's this big old place up here. Now it is close to the top, which isn't ideal, but I think that for this tutorial, we're just gonna go ahead and use all this space up here. So let me go ahead and cancel this planning. 
Now, when you're planning your defenses, you're gonna wanna turn on this little toggle down here, the visibility of terrain affordance, and you'll see what you can and cannot build on. So this red means that we cannot build any heavy structures. So that means anything above a wooden wall. You do not wanna put your defenses on any red, obviously, and also any orange, because you're gonna want your defense walls to be made out of stone. What type of stone is, of course, based off of what's available in your map. So I have a lot of limestone and a lot of sandstone. I recommend going to the RimWorld wiki and looking at the different types of walls you can build and their HP values. And of course, you're going to want the walls with the strongest HP for your defenses. They're a little longer to build, but that's the price you pay for having stronger walls. <laughs> So let's go ahead and plan out where we would put our walls. Now you want your walls to be three tiles thick. It's not really a magic number. It's just better than two tiles thick. Four tiles thick is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> and then one tile thick is not going to do it for you. One tile wall is fine at the beginning of the game, but eventually you're going to get enemies who are sappers or even just miners trying to get on through your wall. Three tiles is just enough to maybe convince enemy raiders to to not try to sap through your walls, but again, it's not its not the magic number. They will still try to get through these walls. And based off of this map, the thickest that we could go is four tiles because of this little area here in red. We wouldn't be able to build here. So let's just go ahead and, and plan out four. I'll probably only end up building three if this was a real game, but it's good to know that there is room for four. I want to use this area as my kill box just because it is faced toward the middle of the map instead of all the way up here. I think that would be a very silly place to put to put a kill box. It does depend on your play style if you are the kill box kind of type or the kill field kind of type or maybe even someone who doesn't even build walls around their colonies. Maybe you just have like a little box here that you shoot out of. It's up to you and it's up to your play style. Personally, I just do like a type of kill field kill box. <laughs> it's like a hybrid of the two. Um, let's see here. So I would put a wall here. You can't you can't build on the geyser, unfortunately, but it is only a two by two space you can't build on, I believe. So I'll build here and have the wall go up here. So I'm using the mountain to my advantage here. And then I'll set up just like a simple little trap that you probably see everyone make. This tutorial is not really how to make a kill box tutorial. <laughs> this is really just a super basic kind of field here. Pro tip, if you do have a bunch of rocks in the way of your kill box, turn on the toggle visibility of roofs. And this is going to put a green highlight over where roofs might be, especially on overhead mountains. As you can see, these rocks here luckily do not have any of this green highlight. That means there's no roof over these rocks and we will be able to mine them out and leave no shelter for the raiders. And same with this area here. You don't want your raiders to have something to hide behind. If this did have a roof and I tried mining this out, the roof would end up collapsing and leaving like a pile of debris that raiders would be able to hide behind. And I don't believe there's any way to get rid of that. So if that were the case, I would end up making my kill box look like this instead. But that's not the case here, luckily enough. After we've planned out our defenses, the next thing I like to do is locate all of the steam geysers that might be on the map and planning around them. What you want to do is plan a six by six area around this geyser. And this is going to be the size of any geothermal vents that you might want to build eventually, which I assume you will. <laughs> So after you plan your six by six, you can go ahead and make a room for that while canceling out the middle part. And if you ever wanna build around it, you can do that um, or at least just leave one space around it so colonists can walk around your geothermal vent. Now I believe that's the only one in our base. So I might be starved for power if I end up playing this game, which I'm not going to. Now I do have this geothermal base that I might end up trying to use later on if I was playing this game. That would mean having to shorten our kill box by just a little bit, but unfortunately that does leave this area a little vulnerable to raiders, so we would need to um, make sure the walls are super thick so that hopefully the raiders don't come in and, and try to mess with our geothermal vent here. 
All right, let's go ahead and turn off the roofs. We don't need those on anymore. The next thing that I do is plan where my farm is going to go. The best place for your farm is going to be on rich soil. And to see that, you can probably see it uh, just by looking. Uh, but sometimes it is a little difficult to see. So you can turn on this toggle fertility overlay. And this bright green spot is your rich soil. The orange spots are kind of crappy soil. You can see in the corner that it says fertility only 70% compared to 100% fertility in the teal. And then 140% fertility in this rich spot here. So we do want to avoid farming in this area here. So I'm going to get out my planning tool and just sort of plan a general area around where I would want my farm to go. I'm not a pro at how big you want your farm to be. I usually just make a decent size, like something like that is fine. There are videos out there that go into the numbers of how big you want your farm, what exactly you're planting, the type of soil you're planting it in, how many colonists you have, things like that. It gets a little ridiculous um, and it's something that I've never really gone into myself. So you can look at videos for that if you want like a particular number of how big you want your farm but for me I'm just gonna make it like this size I think is good just a totally random size that I came up with 14 by 18 and then we can turn off our toggle fertility overlay pro tip it's also a good idea to put your farm around any steam geysers you might have if you build around a steam geyser it's going to heat up that room by quite a bit and this would allow you to make a greenhouse in the winter time without using any heaters if you have a steam geyser by any rich soil, all the better. <laughs> For this game though, I'm not quite comfortable putting my farm so close to my kill box, so I'm just gonna keep it over here for now. Do make sure you are planning around your farm like this for two reasons. First, you will want to build some kind of wall to keep wildlife out from eating all of your crops. You can always build a wall and then unroof it and it's, and it's fine. The second reason is eventually you might want to put in some sun lamps for the winter and again you're going to need that planned and walled up. To plan out your sun lamp room, get out your planning tool and make an 11 by 11 zone and then clear out the corners by 4. And this is the radius of your sun lamp. At this point you could choose a different color and go through and Highlight the edges of your sun lamp, copy this, and move it into your farm and you can see exactly how the sun lamp would look inside here. So I would only need maybe like two sun lamps to fill most of this room, which I think is a good size. Next, let's go ahead and color code this green for farm. And this will make it easier later to see exactly what's going on. Okay, next is the fridge and the kitchen. Now you want your fridge to be attached to both your farm and your kitchen, so it is in a nice position to pick up and drop off food. And you want your kitchen in an area that's out of the way from the rest of your base. You don't want random colonists just running in and out of your kitchen, tracking in dirt. Your kitchen needs to stay clean. So I think for this base, a good out of the way position for the kitchen might be this area here. So let's go ahead and plan that. The kitchen can be this yellow color, I suppose. And I'm just making it a random size for now. That seems good. And then I want my fridge to be attached to my kitchen. And what I'm going to do is add two thick walls for some extra insulation in our fridge. Maybe something like this. That's a good size for a fridge, I think. It is nine by nine, seems good to me. Once you have your fridge, your kitchen, and your farm planned out, the next thing you wanna do is plan out an airlock between the fridge, the farm, and the kitchen. And this means placing a one tile thick little hallway, something like that, that's going to help keep the freezer cold whenever the doors are opening and closing. So you can plan something like putting a door right here in the middle, a door to the kitchen, a door to the outside, and then a door to the farm, either here or here or both. That way, the doors have time to close before another door is open to the outside. Something optional that I like to do is add a little butcher area off of the fridge. You do not want your butcher production table to be in the kitchen because that provides a high chance of food poisoning to whatever you're cooking in the kitchen. It can be placed inside the fridge, 
but the cold air is going to hurt the speed and efficiency of that butcher table. So what I like to do is just make a little room off of the fridge here, and maybe that's a little too small. You can do something like that. And this sort of acts as its own airlock, so you don't need to double insulate into the butcher room. And we could put the door maybe like there, and then the door into the fridge here. And you can put your butcher table here. Let's go ahead and do that just so we can see what it's gonna look like. Sometimes I'll put all my production tables out and just forbid them until I'm ready to build them. And same with the kitchen. Okay, so we have a really nice area for our freezer, kitchen, and farm. I'm, I'm liking it. The next step is to add a dining room. You want the dining room to be near the fridge so that colonists can enter the fridge to grab their meals if they want. If you are using the rim fridge mod, you don't have to do this. You can put the dining room anywhere you want. But for this tutorial, I'm going to assume that we do not have the rim fridge mod. So we do want it nearby the fridge. And before you plan your dining room, you're going to have to make a decision on whether or not you want hallways in your base. Now, personally, I like outdoor hallways because it gives the colonists an opportunity to go outside when they're walking in between buildings. Otherwise, they might get a mood debuff of being stuck inside. This isn't always a good thing, though, because it does track in dirt whenever they're outside all the time. But you could use the doormat mod for this um, if you're worried about dirt. Indoor hallways are really good because it's much easier to control the temperature of the entire base. It also doesn't get very dirty or no hallways altogether. It makes it even easier to control the dirt and the temperature. So if you didn't want any hallways, you would just make the dining room attached just like that. For me personally, I love outdoor hallways and that's just like how I always build my colonies. So for this tutorial, that's what we're going to do. But do consider how you play your games and whether or not you want these, these hallways or not. So let's make the dining room, I don't know, let's make it orange, I guess, and plan three tiles from the farm in the fridge and just draw a little line and that's where our, our dining room will eventually go. I always do three tile width hallways. Um, it seems kind of big and excessive, but it does give you room to add decorations or lights or heaters or whatever, assuming it's an indoor hallway. If it's an outdoor hallway, what you can do is add a little road in the middle here and then plant some nice flowers off to the side so it looks really pretty. <laughs> Again, totally optional. It's up to you how you guys want to design your hallways. I do recommend at least two tiles in width for your hallways if you're going the hallway route just so your pawns can walk around each other if they need to. Now how big you make your dining room is completely up to you. You do want a large size. Always make sure that you're not going above 11 or 12 on one side of the wall or else your roof is going to collapse and that's no good. Um, although you can use columns to keep up your roof if you do decide to make a very big dining room. Something I like to do is just go into furniture and pick out a nice big table that I might end up wanting to use. Maybe a 2x4 table or a 3x3 table. And then making sure that there's room for a dining table, a space before the wall, and then the table. So something like this. And then I would plan around this. Something like that. And then I can go ahead and either cancel or forbid these until I'm ready to make them. You can do the same thing with a two by four table. Maybe you're gonna want like a ton of different tables if you're planning a very big colony. So the size of your dining room is going to change depending on your play style. Next are the bedrooms. The bedrooms you want to be placed all around your dining room. This way, colonists will prefer to use the dining room for breakfast when they wake up. And if your dining room is really nice, nicely decorated, it's very clean, they will get a mood buff that will carry on throughout the day. So it is a good idea to make sure your bedrooms are near the dining room just so they prefer to eat here first thing in the morning. The size of your bedrooms is again kind of up to you. Let's go ahead and make them pink. Now I usually make my bedrooms like a five by five, maybe even five by six, or in this case, we would go all the way up to seven by seven and then clear out the middle here. This size fits all of the furniture pretty well and it also allows you to put a door right in the middle here, which is always very satisfying. <laughs> After that, I usually just copy my plan and then paste it all around the dining room. 
if something like this happens where I've run into the, the fridge or the butcher area, it's not a problem. This is exactly why we're planning out our bases like this. So now what I'm going to do is either move the butcher room to maybe over here or just make it a little bigger. I think it might be a better idea just to move the butcher room up here somewhere. And then we can cancel this. We do want all of our bedrooms to be sort of clumped together and connected in a way that only one bedroom needs either a heater or an air conditioner, and then you connect them all with vents so that they are temperature controlled. So I went ahead and planned something like this. This gives the colonists a way to walk this way whenever they want to access the fridge while also being able to walk around the dining room to get to their bedrooms. Now the problem with this is that I did not give myself an opportunity to possibly expand if I ever get more than eight colonists or eight bedrooms. So what I'm going to do is cancel this room, copy a bedroom, and then start moving over like this. So something like that and then we can go ahead and start building down here if we ever need to. We might even want to go ahead and remove these rooms here just so that we have room for our colonists to walk this way if they need to. And again this gives opportunity to add vents in between each of the rooms whenever they're clumped together like this. This blue is where the vent would go. You might put a heater in this room and then an AC unit in this room and it should go ahead and normalize all of the temperatures in this group. Now for this group here, I might put some vents in like that and then maybe I would put both the heater and the AC unit in this room and hopefully it gets to the edges here. Okay, next thing we wanna do is plan a separate room for social gathering or a rec room. It is a good idea to have the rec room be slightly centralized to your base so that colonists will prefer to go there when they can. I might go ahead and plan the rec room for this area here. So let's pick the color, I don't know, yellow is the color of our kitchen, but it's now the color of our rec room. <laughs> Not a problem. It's a good idea to make sure that the room is at least a little large because your colonists are going to get a mood buff if it's a big room and if it's nicely decorated. Pro tip, if you are using the hospitality mod, I recommend putting little rooms off of this room and setting a zone just for guests in this area. I'm gonna go ahead and assume you do have hospitality and we're gonna plan something kind of small, kind of nice, so maybe something like this, which gives room for just like one little bed, which I will go ahead and put in here and forbid it because we don't actually need that bed made. Sometimes what I'll do is I will make the little rooms uh, a little bigger and have two beds that way we can put an end table right in the middle here and then have a door right in the middle, which I just love. <laughs> and then we can go ahead and plan the rest of the rooms like this. And if you found that you need to increase the size of your rec room to accommodate for these bedrooms, that's exactly why we're planning this out now. So you don't have to do that later. And there's our rec room. Next is the room I always forget about making until it's too late, the hospital. Now you're gonna want the hospital either right by the entrance to your kill box because this is probably where your colonists are going to get injured the most, or you want it near your fridge because this is where you're going to be storing your heal root, unless you have, of course, the rim fridge mod, or you're far enough into the game that you're making your own medicine. I'm going to assume we're making our own medicine at this point, so we're going to build our hospital up here somewhere. Now, the hospitals I make are pretty particular. I always make them 11 by 18, 
and I'll just do it right by this geyser here so we can share a wall. And then after 11 by 18, I go ahead and cancel out the middle. So it's actually a nine by 16 room. The reason for this size is that it gives me room to make two little batches of hospital beds. And I'll show you what I mean. So let's use this wooden bed as an example. I want it to be at least two tiles from the wall here and make a shape that's kind of like this. And you're gonna want two tiles from all of the walls here. Now, whenever we research the vitals monitor, we can put that right here in the middle. So let's use like this as, a, as the vitals monitor and all of these beds are going to attach. And we can do the same thing over here. And then you can put whatever else you want around the edges here, maybe like a big flat screen TV. And that also gives room for your pawns to walk around if they want to. So after we've made our hospital, then we wanna find a big empty spot for our general stockpile. And this stockpile is going to hold almost everything early game, and then it's going to act as a sort of overflow late game. Now I like my general stockpiles to be either 13 by 13 or 15 by 15 with columns to hold up the roof, because that's the size of the orbital trade beacon. Now I don't think I can fit a stockpile here, unfortunately, while still maintaining my three width hallways here. So let's go ahead and build it up here. We can go ahead and make it this white color. Okay, so here's my huge freaking stockpile, <laughs> 15 by 15. And you can see how the orbital trade beacon is going to fit in that area. Now for the areas that it doesn't fit, what I generally do is go into the storage mod that I have and put in like a bunch of pallets off on the, on the corners and they hold a bunch of raw resources for me. Okay, so after we planned our stockpile, we then want to plan our crafting room. Your crafting room will want to be very close to your stockpile zone because that's where they're going to be getting all of their resources. So you can have it either attached directly to the stockpile room or just adjacent to it. You're going to want to plan your crafting room to be pretty big because eventually you'll want to include what I like to call closets of materials of raw resources that are going to be close to your production tables. So for example, a closet of steel is going to be by your smithy or a closet of textiles will be by your tailoring bench. I don't normally do that early game. All of my textiles and steel and whatever is going to be in this stockpile zone here, but eventually I will want to be a little more efficient and have the, the closets much closer to the production tables. You also want to consider tool cabinets. Tool cabinets reach production benches in a 15 by 16 area, not including the corners. So maybe you can plan something like a 12 by 16 or even like a 12 by 32, so you can have two batches of toolboxes. If you do want to plan the size of your crafting room based off of the toolboxes area of effect, what you could do is do like a 15 by 16 room and then have the corners act as closets. Now for this plan in my tutorial, I only have this space to work with. I could make the crafting room up here, but I don't like having it so far out of the way. I think this is a good spot for it. So let's go ahead and see what size crafting room we have to work with. Okay, so I basically just made a crafting room to fit wherever I could while still maintaining the three tile width hallways just because I think that looks really nice. The room is 17 tiles wide, which is perfect for the tool cabinet, I think. We'll end up filling in the spaces around the radius of the tool cabinet where it doesn't reach with my little closets, or I might go ahead and just use um, pallets from the storage mod. There's also plenty of room to expand whenever I need to. Something else that I thought I'd point out is that a lot of people like to put their different production tables inside different rooms, which you can totally do if, if that's what you want. By putting different production tables in different rooms, you can potentially cut down on the chit chat between pawns, which kind of slows down efficiency, but I typically don't do that. I like having just like one big crafting room and then setting up either little closets or storage pallets or shelves for the raw resources that they need. So really, it's up to you. After I plan my crafting room, I go ahead and plan where I want my research benches to go. It is better to have a separate room for your research benches, so it counts as its 
its own room with its own cleanliness factor. Now you do get a speed modifier on your research if the room is considered sterile. Now the speed modifier isn't terribly significant. I do generally just put my research benches inside the crafting room, but I do recommend at least considering where you might put a research bench in its own room. If you do want its own room, I recommend one side be at least five tiles because that is the size of a high-tech research bench. So let's go and see where we might put our research. We could put it here. This is five tiles exactly. So the research bench would just fit in this little room here and we can close it off like that. Or we could see if we could put a room here or even up here would work too. In fact, it might be better to have a 10 tile width research room just so you have room for two research benches if you wanted. So let's go ahead and plan something like that. I'll just use yellow for my research room. You could just do something like that. So now two research benches will fit here and then you can put your multi analyzer up here and maybe even like some cabinets to increase the speed of the research. You don't want it to be too big because you will want to floor this with sterile tiles which of course is very expensive. So you could make this a huge research lab if you wanted, but I, I don't recommend it. Now, once all of this is in place, you might wanna go ahead and plan where your prison is going to go. If you are using the prison labor mod, maybe figure out what it is you want your prisoners to do. If you want them to mine, or if you want them to craft, this is going to influence where exactly you put your prison. For me personally, I love having my prisoners be forced to mine or be forced into the quarry, which is its own mod here. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and plan for you guys. But again, it's going to be very different for you depending on what you want your prisoners to do. So I'm going to plan where my quarry goes first, and I think this is a good spot for it here. I planted it, so now it has a bunch of mining set up, which I will cancel later. Now I'm just going to plan around it. Uh, what color do you think? Let's do red. Now the quarry is a little dangerous because it is a 12 by 12 area. If you end up mining even just like one tile too far, the mountain is going to collapse in on itself, which has happened to me. It was very, very disheartening because um, then you actually lose this area to even put the quarry. So just keep that in mind if you are using this mod. So then I decide where the platform is going to go. How about over here? And then I'll plan around that. Finally, I can decide where I'm going to put my prisoners. And I think this little area here is perfect for now. Make that out of white here. And then you can force your prisoners to actually make their own little area here. Pro tip, it is actually a very good idea to put your jail attached to your fridge in some way. This way, what you can do is put the nutrient paste dispenser inside your fridge that feeds directly into the prison. You don't have to worry about feeding your prisoners and you can put the hopper right into your fridge to keep it chill. Now, because I am so close to the fridge, I might go ahead and plan that, but only worry about that maybe later in the game. Also, when you're planning your jail, you do want to have your prisoners in little individual rooms. If prisoners are all clumped together in the same room, there is a higher chance of a prison break. So what I like to do is plan out an entire prison for them with individual cells. Now let's see what we can do here. So here is the jail that I planned. You can see all these tiny little rooms are going to be the cells. And then this purple is going to act as a sterile little prison hospital. I also included a poker table so that they can have some fun when they need it. Obviously, this is very optional. You probably don't treat your prisoners humanely in RimWorld. I do. Um, also a nice little table for them and, and the nutrient paste dispenser. I do want to note that my colonists won't be the ones mining this out. It is that first prisoner I get who will be stuck in this little room here and will eventually mine the rest of this out, again using that prison labor mod. Okay, the last step in my planning process is power. You will likely be using wind turbines early in the game, so it's a good opportunity to find where you want these to go. A lot of people like to put them inside their farm, and it looks like I uh, coincidentally made it the perfect size. By putting these in the farm, you are making it a lot easier to keep the wind turbines areas completely clear of trees. If you happen to have any sort of poor soil in the garden, it might be a good idea to put the wind turbine there. Now let's see here. 
yeah, it's a perfect fit. So if you want to copy this, what, what size is this? This is a uh, 14 by 18 zone. So we could potentially do that, although it does get rid of some spots for our crops. Now we could also put some turbines up here because this is very out of the way. And this red area actually kind of guarantees that no trees are going to grow there. So we could actually put it here. That would be a good spot for it. Alternatively, over here perhaps. Eventually, you might want to unlock solar power, which you can put in front of the wind turbines. It will not block the turbines and it will keep trees from growing there. So that's always a good spot. And then after that, you might want to consider a room just for batteries. This is totally optional. Usually I just put my batteries in either the fridge or the stockpile room just so that they are roofed early game. But eventually it might be a good idea to plan out a room for them. And actually this is a very good spot to put it. It would be connected to the geothermal vent whenever that gets created. And it's basically out of the way from the rest of your base here. Now let's go ahead and plan out a little small room. Let's make it out of red for explosions. Something like that works. And then we clear out the middle here and then you would put your batteries in here now I don't actually have any batteries right now to show you how I would set that up uh, but a good idea might be to actually separate the batteries with some sort of stone wall like this and put the batteries in here like that uh, that way if one battery happens to explode or catch fire the other batteries are not going to be affected pro tip have a separate batch of batteries connected by a switch Fill up the batteries and then turn off the switch. That way, when you get an event that causes a sudden power loss, you can turn on the switch and have some backup batteries at your disposal. And that's it. You now have a nicely planned base. Now we do have this big empty spot right in the middle of our colony, which might drive you nuts that there's no building here. It's just this big empty space. But what you could do is plan like a very fancy town gathering spot or something. You can put some fancy floors here and then maybe cancel out the corners so that it looks like a nice circle. We can probably cancel out a little bit more here. And then maybe right here in the middle, you can put some sort of um, statue or something. So that fills in the space and it also makes it look really pretty. When you are ready to actually begin playing the game, I do recommend building the fridge first along with the stockpile room. And that way when you get your items indoors, they don't deteriorate. Sometimes I'll put my beds inside of the stockpile room and then branch out from there based on what the game calls for. I usually end up making either the bedrooms or the kitchen or even the crafting room next. So what do you think? Make sure to leave a comment down below about how you build your bases. And of course, leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it.